It's Tuesday, January 15th. Karnataka's infamous resort politics, where lawmakers are shepherded into resorts or hotels either to prevent them from being poached by a rival party or as a means of poaching, may be in play again. Congress's key troubleshooter and Karnataka Water Resources Minister D.K. Shivakumar has alleged that the BJP was indulging in horse trading and had lured three of its MLAs to a Mumbai hotel. Shivakumar said the development was part of the BJP's Operation Lotus, aimed at ousting the JDS Congress government in the state. Operation Lotus is a term that was first used in 2008 to describe the BJP's efforts to lure opposition MLAs to ensure the stability of the BS Yadurapa government. Chief Minister H.D. Kumaraswamy was quoted by PTI as saying, I know who they're approaching, what they offer to MLAs. I'm collecting all news and doing whatever possible from my side to see that the BJP does not disturb the government. He also said that three Congress MLAs were in touch with him and had gone to Mumbai only after informing him. The BJP has denied the allegations. Watch this space for more. The Supreme Court on Monday issued notice to the Centre on petitions challenging the government's December 2018 order that allowed 10 government agencies to intercept, monitor and decrypt any and all communication on any computer. The Ministry of Home Affairs order, dubbed the license to snoop order by the opposition, directed that the service provider, subscriber or person in charge of a computer resource will be bound to extend all technical assistance to the 10 security and intelligence agencies. Failing to do so will lead to imprisonment, which may extend to seven years and a fine. Among the grounds on which it has been challenged in the Supreme Court are that the order is unconstitutional, it violates the right to privacy. The petition expresses the apprehension that citizens may be penalized for expressing views opposing those of the governments reports Baron Bench. The centre and the opposition had clashed over the issue during the winter session of parliament with the Congress president tweeting, converting India into a police state isn't going to solve your problems, Modiji. It's only going to prove to over 1 billion Indians what an insecure dictator you really are. The government had responded saying, the rules for intercepting and monitoring computer data were framed in 2009 when the Congress-led UPA was in power and this new order only notified the designated authority which can carry out such action. In his blog, Minister Arun Jaitley wrote, An interception or monitoring is only authorised under a specific approval of the Home Secretary. It can only be in cases which deal with the purposes mentioned in Section 69 of the Information Technology Act. Now, let's take a look at what the laws say on safeguards against unbridled surveillance or snooping. As per the Information Technology Procedure and Safeguards for Interception, Monitoring and Decryption of Information Rules 2009, no person shall carry out interception or monitoring or decryption except by an order issued by a competent authority. Competent authority is described as the Secretary Ministry of Home Affairs or Secretary in Charge of Home in the State, as the case may be. In unavoidable circumstances, sanction may be given by an officer not below the rank of Joint Secretary who has been duly authorised by the competent authority. Any direction by the competent authority to intercept, monitor, etc. shall contain reasons for such direction and a copy of which will be provided to a review committee within seven working days. The name and designation of the officer of the authorised agency to whom the intercepted information will be disclosed and how that information will be used will also need to be specified. Now, if these safeguards exist, what is the issue with the government's notification authorising the 10 agencies to carry out interception, you would ask? Speaking to The Telegraph in December, Ramanjit Singh Chima, a privacy rights lawyer, said, The notification is akin to a power of attorney document that delegates the authority to the agencies. Chima, policy director for Access Now, an organization campaigning for digital rights, added, Without an addendum to the notification, specifying the requirement to seek approval, this move confers massive powers on the agencies. 
The government through a press release though insisted no new powers have been conferred to law enforcement agencies and that each case of interception monitoring decryption is to be approved by the competent authority which is the home secretary. However, as the Internet Freedom Foundation, one of the petitioners in the Supreme Court which has challenged the constitutional validity of the entire surveillance mechanism points out there is neither parliamentary nor judicial oversight to such electronic surveillance. There is little scope for the subject of surveillance to approach a court in specific instances since the system itself is covert. The very existence of such disproportionate power vesting with one wing of the government, i.e. the executive, would impact the separation of power between the executive legislature and judiciary. It is also important to remember that India still does not have a data protection law to regulate the processing of information relating to individuals and to prohibit the disclosure or misuse of such information. There is a strong possibility of Pakistani-Canadian Tahabur Hossein Rana, a 2611 co-conspirator currently serving a 14-year jail term in the United States, being extradited to India, news agency PTI quoted an informed source as saying. Rana, a former Pakistan army doctor who later became a Canadian citizen, aided his childhood friend and Mumbai attacks key conspirator David Coleman Headley in, among other things, providing a cover and scouting of targets for lashkar e taiba to attack. The government had, during the just-concluded session of parliament, confirmed that efforts to extradite co-conspirators of the Mumbai attacks are ongoing. Minister of State for External Affairs V.K. Singh said, most recently, a team from the National Investigation Agency visited the United States on December 13th to 15th for discussions with U.S. authorities. PTI reports that the government, with full cooperation from the Trump administration, is currently working on completing the necessary paperwork to ensure Rana's extradition before his current jail term ends in December 2021. As per existing U.S. law, Rana, a Pakistani-born Canadian national, would likely be deported to Canada if India and the United States are unable to complete the cumbersome extradition process before that. There is going to be a film soon. And the memes continue. As the March 29 deadline for Brexit, the British exit from the European Union looms ahead, British lawmakers are scheduled to vote on Prime Minister Theresa May's exit deal today. According to the BBC, over half of Britain's 650 member House of Commons will likely vote no. If the deal is rejected, the Prime Minister gets three days to come up with a Plan B deal that MPs vote yes on and the EU signs off on as well. Should the government fail to come up with and agree on such a deal, Britain is looking at a state of freefall called the No Deal Brexit, which is, to quote the BBC, a type of Brexit where the UK cuts all ties with the European Union overnight on March 29 with no deals in place. That essentially means that UK loses all trade agreements it has with other countries within the EU. British expats and EU citizens working in the UK are plunged into uncertainty about their immigration status. Food prices go up, there is shortage of goods, and EU laws and licenses applicable in the UK suddenly cease to apply. In short, chaos. A few other alternatives are a complete renegotiation in which the UK requests the EU for an extension, and if they agree, Parliament passes an act postponing the March 29 deadline. A second Brexit referendum. See you tomorrow. Love your morning fix? Help support our journalism. Subscribe to Scroll Plus using the link in the description.